Hey guys, Michael from Fire and Brilliance. And today's episode, as well as next week's episode, I'll be actually answering a few questions uh, on the YouTube comments in order to uh, really address what people are asking, okay? So uh, I kind of filtered out you know, a bunch of questions in the past, uh, or and I basically filtered it in, in a way where I'm seeing some common questions. I'm gonna go ahead and break down one of the more common questions in this episode. Uh, but before getting right into it, I do wanna say again, Especially if you've been following us for a long time, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and uh, you know, obviously, it shows that you support us and follow us on TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, as well as Pinterest. Uh, in today's episode, it's a very common question. It's basically, how do I identify the difference between a natural diamond, a lab diamond, and a moissanite? And I'm gonna get right into it for you. <laughs> All right, again, as I mentioned to you earlier, this episode is in dedication to all of our fans, all right? So uh, after filtering through a bunch of comments, uh, we've seen a very common question uh, on, on a topic that we've uh, kind of brushed over in the past, and obviously in some episodes we'll go over and some episodes we won't. Uh, but in today's episode, I'm going to consolidate that information to basically go over this specific question, okay? Uh, there's a uh, gentleman by the name of Steven Lazada who left this uh, comment about two days ago. Uh, and his question is, how do we make sure we don't have a fake diamond moissanite? All right, so uh, first of all, I do want to address to you, Steven, that uh, in some cases you may <laughs> be offending a lot of people. Again, you know, there's really nothing fake. Uh, about a moissanite or there's really nothing fake about a lab diamond. It just really depends on what you like and what you don't like. Uh, the difference is one is man-made and one is a natural. Okay, so those are the key words. One is man-made and one is natural. But I believe what he's trying to ask is how is he able to better identify whether it's a natural versus a lab created versus a, a lab diamond versus a natural diamond. So uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and give you four tips or four ways you can actually better identify uh, a the difference between a lab created gemstone or in this case, a lab created diamond uh, versus a natural diamond versus a moissanite, all right? So tip number one is if you know what you're looking for, then you could use a professional jeweler's loop. Okay, so for moissanite, what you really wanna look for is there's a characteristic of a moissanite called doubly refractive. If you don't know what a refraction is of a gemstone, then definitely click on the link up above. It'll take you directly to a, uh, a basically a series uh, that we've gone over before uh, that breaks down the refraction of a gemstone. In short, what that means is when a light, when light passes through a gemstone, it's similar to that of a prism. It'll break out the color scheme in different colors, just like that of a rainbow. In a moissanite's case, it's called doubly refractive. The, the way a moissanite refracts light, you can see double of that specific refraction. So if you see that doubly refractive uh, lighting environment after looking through a jeweler's loop, then you should be able to identify whether it's a moissanite or a diamond because a diamond is not doubly refractive. However, so, so that's number one. Tip number one is by looking through a jeweler's loop and if you see, again, a refraction that is doubled, then that is a moissanite. And if you don't, then chances are that is a diamond. But obviously, how do you know if, if that is a lab diamond versus a natural diamond? Because a lab diamond and a natural diamond are both diamonds. Just one is a natural and one is man made, right? So if it's a, if both are single, then that will not uh, basically tell you right away whether or not it's lab grown or not. So that's only tip number one. Now, point number two is you could definitely get a diamond tester. Uh, there are many handheld diamond testers right now that are relatively inexpensive that you can purchase anywhere between uh, t from $20 up to $200, right? So it depends on how sophisticated you want the diamond tester to be. Now on the diamond tester, it, it tests the thermal uh, conductivity of the gemstone, uh, which will better identify whether it's a CZ to a moissanite to a diamond. So, so these diamond testers, uh, these handheld diamond testers will not, are not, sometimes are not as sophisticated where it can differentiate the difference between a lab diamond or a natural diamond, uh, but it can, if you get uh, a, a pricier handheld uh, diamond tester, can differentiate between a CZ, a moissanite, or 
a diamond, regardless if it's a lab diamond or a natural. Now that said, there are also more sophisticated devices that uh, most people won't purchase, uh, but some jewelers will, right? So some jewelers uh, will purchase a device uh, that can cost into the tens of thousands of dollars uh, that will be able to pick up the, uh, a lab created gemstone, regardless if it's a lab diamond, or a natural diamond. So it depends on who you work with. It depends on the jewelry you work with or, or have they invested in this type of uh, equipment. And if they did, then when you do make the purchase, uh, basically Steven, right? If you do make the purchase between, uh, or if you wanna better identify, go to that jeweler and say, hey, can you help me test it out and see if they're able to uh, use that device so that it could pick up whether or not it is lab grown or if it's natural. Many of these devices have a very specific type of uh, scanning technique where if it's a lab diamond, uh, then it will pick it up and have a, uh, a red light indicating that that's a lab diamond, whereas the other gemstones will not uh, pick up that, uh, it will not identify that gemstone th via a, a red, uh, it looks more almost like an infrared red light, right? So, uh, so that's how it works. So that's uh, the second way that you can actually differentiate between, or identify rather, the difference between a, uh, a lab diamond, a natural diamond, and a moissanite. Now point number three, uh, what can you do, right? So what can you do in terms of, um, you know, let's just say if you've already exhausted all of your options. Uh, let's just say you live in uh, a certain area where, okay, you, number one, you got a professional loop and you took a look at it. Uh, but you don't know exactly what you're looking for, so uh, so you're still unsure. Uh, and number two, uh, you took it to your local jeweler, but they haven't really invested into a very sophisticated machine uh, that can pick up whether it's a lab diamond versus a natural diamond. Uh, so you're still unsure. What the best thing to do, to be honest with you, is uh, point number three, uh, the best piece of advice that I could uh, potentially give you is to send it into a laboratory such as GIA or the Gemological Institute of America. Uh, in the laboratories, they have professional graders, professional diamond graders, as well as very, very, very sophisticated expensive equipment that will uh, be able to identify whether it's a moissanite, whether it's a lab diamond, or whether it's a natural diamond. Uh, that's truly the only almost 100% uh, almost, I'll say 100% almost, right? But nothing in life is 100% because even people can screw up, right? Whether or not they're professional or not. But uh, it, that's almost the best way to secure uh, your peace of mind, whether or not you have a lab or a natural, if that's important to you. Because once it's sent in, multiple people will grade it. And at the same time, it will be uh, uh, the type of equipment that they're using is very sophisticated uh, to basically take a look into the gemstone and identify the way that the diamond was grown. And by identifying into a microscopic level, they'll be able to identify whether or not that growth structure was natural or whether or not it was grown in a lab. So that said, my fourth uh, piece of advice to you is this. At the end of the day, you can go through this entire process through a professional loop. You can go through this entire process by uh, getting a diamond held, held, handheld tester or going to your jeweler that has a, you know, some more sophisticated equipment or even send it to a GIA lab to know for sure whether it's a lab or a natural. Uh, but at the end of the day, the best thing for you to do is to do, take all the preventive measures prior to actually making the purchase. And the preventive measure is by working with a trusted jeweler. If you're working with a trusted jeweler that's been around, that has a reputation, that, has, that is reputable in the industry that you're looking for, uh, then chances are you are going to get what you're paying for. Uh, because most jewelers has been around for a long time, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years uh, or longer, they are not going to risk their reputation over one transaction. Most jewelers that are going to risk their uh, reputation over one or two transactions won't be around for very long. So make sure you do your research. Uh, definitely look at who you want to work with and identify that person prior to even making the purchase. So when they, you do leave the store or when you do check out online and when you do make that purchase, uh, then at least you already know at 90% at or 95% or even 99% chance that you trust that jeweler so that you don't have to go through these measures of better identifying whether or not it's a lab or a natural.
All right, you guys like the breakdown of what I just did there? You know, obviously I gave you four points as to how you can better identify uh, the difference between lab-created gemstones and natural gemstones, regardless if it's a moissanite or a diamond, a ruby, a sapphire, or what have you. These are some ways you can actually do that, okay? Uh, that said, if you've been following us for a long time, definitely subscribe to the channel, and you have not been following us for a long time, and you like what you see, uh, definitely show that you support us by subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, and again, leave a comment below. Let us know what you want us to talk about the future episodes because we do read all of your comments just like how this uh, episode is dedicated to you so we do and we will make a episode just for you if that specific topic is popular enough because we do that all of the time okay again follow us on tiktok pinterest um, facebook instagram as well as twitter and i'll see you again next time goodbye